Well, today we check back in with the Reddit Am I the A-Hole Forum to try to solve some moral quandaries. People, you know, um, will ask me why I think I'm qualified to chime in on these kinds of issues. And the reason is that I'm an a-hole myself and of long standing and have a lot of experience in that field. So that gives me, uh, I think, a, an important perspective on these issues. So we'll start with this. Um, am I the a-hole for explaining to my friend that horses do have weight limits? <laughs> it sounds like a good one already. I live and work on my parents' horse ranch where we have six quarter horses that normally weigh six, six quarter horses, like a quarter of a, <laughs> a, a type of horse, I guess. Uh, we, they normally weigh 900 to 1,200 pounds. The safe and comfortable weight to be carried in these horses is no more than 250 pounds. I'm obese right now, and I'm currently on a weight loss journey myself, so I do not ride these horses myself uh, because I know that I exceed the weight that's comfortable for them. A few days ago, my friend Carly came over to the ranch to help out. She asked if she could um, ride one of these horses. Carly weighs more than I do. She's also on a weight loss journey. And I explained to her that horses have a weight limit, and that's why I don't ride them either. She got very quiet and then left. She texted me later saying I was an asshole for calling her fat. Am I the asshole? Well, it's definitely a wake-up call. Okay, when you're too fat to ride a, to ride a horse, that's that's a wake-up call. I see you got a weight problem. Can't wait to eat. Um, and it, it goes to show, by the way, that morbid obesity is a modern invention. This is something that we invented in modern times. It didn't exist before. Like, it just didn't exist. It just almost nowhere in the world could you find it for most of human history. Uh, because if you were morbidly obese in the 1800s, you'd have to walk the Oregon Trail. And probably be good for you if you did. You'd lose some weight. Now, are you the a-hole for preventing your obese friend from turning your horse into a horse pancake? Not at all. Um, I'm, I'm not much of an animal rights guy, but I absolutely believe that preventing spinal injuries to your horse is more important than protecting your friend's feelings. But your friend is infected with this modern attitude, which says that, uh, that you, you're you not allowed to acknowledge uncomfortable realities about other people or about yourself, even if your refusal to acknowledge those realities could do real damage to both man and beast. Uh, you're under no obligation to play along with that game, though, and ignore reality. So your friend is the a-hole for trying to make you play that game. You call your friend an asshole this instant. Okay. Am I the a-hole for not letting my boyfriend give my friend a foot rub? A close friend of mine was visiting last week and stayed at my house. Yesterday, we went out for a few hours and I wore heels and encouraged her to wear a cute pair of heels as well. By the time we got back, our feet were in a lot of pain. My boyfriend gave me a foot massage as he always does whenever my feet hurt. And my friend asked him for one as well, but I didn't feel comfortable with that and asked him not to. My friend got upset. She said that I was an a-hole for leaving her in pain and that I was the one who gave her the idea to wear heels for that long, but I just didn't feel comfortable with my boyfriend giving another woman a foot rub. Am I the a-hole? Well, you are the a-hole only for taking your nasty feet out and asking for a foot rub in full view of another person. You've been walking around all day in heels and then you pull your feet out and take your sock off. I guess you weren't, you probably weren't wearing socks if you weren't heels. And you're showing those off in front of somebody else. Feet are disgusting, should never be seen by anybody other than your podiatrist. Go oh, suck it. But don't worry, your friend is even worse. She not only wanted to take her feet out, but actually was soliciting someone else's boyfriend to rub them. What kind of freak are you hanging out with? The foot massage is nothing. I give my mother a foot massage. It's bad enough that you asked your boyfriend to rub your feet. Did you even wash your feet first? Did you take a shower first before you made this request? Yeah. But for her, it's even more perverse. And, and her reason is that she wore heels. Well, whose fault is that? This is why, you know, I don't like to hear this, some of these complaints from women about, oh, it's so hard, we have to wear heels and it makes our feet hurt. Well, it's your decision. High heels are a cross that women are meant to bear with stoicism and dignity. <laughs> Certainly not while asking men to rub your feet. Um, am I the a-hole for not allowing my brother and his wife to stay over in our family vacation house if they bring the dogs? Don't need to read the story here. Uh, you are not. You are not the a-hole. Quite the opposite. I'm going to say this because no one else will. I'm not an a-hole. No one should try to bring their mangy mutts into somebody else's house. It's bad enough to have them in your own house. But to bring them to somebody, that's almost as bad as exposing your feet. He did tell you about the feet. That's why I also don't get back to the feet thing for a second. You know the people that are like... Uh, at, they, they want you to take your shoes off in their house. That, I, I, we don't do that in our house. Why? Like, first of all, it's weird. The, the, the second someone walks into your house, you're, you're telling them to take off items of clothing. How far is this going to go? Strip. And, and also, I, no, I don't want to see. I don't even, like you're just coming in my house. I, I don't want to see your feet. I don't know where you've been this whole time. But anyway, 
Taking the shoes off, that's almost as bad as bringing the dog in. And, and but here's my question. My question. Like, why do we give dogs special treatment in general in life? But when it comes to this, like when it comes to, to pets, if I had a free range tarantula that I let crawl around my house and then I came to your house and I said, oh, I brought my tarantula. Hope you don't mind. And I just let it loose in your living room. Okay. You'd probably be upset about that. How is this different? What if I wanted to bring my kangaroo to your house or a, my pet crocodile? No, you would say, what are you doing bringing animals into my house? I invited you over. You're a human. I didn't invite any am. This isn't a zoo. I don't make an exception for dogs. I don't. Don't be an asshole. You know, you may imagine that you have uh, freedom, but it's mostly an illusion because there are like two or three companies that control pretty much all of our online activity. Big tech is more powerful than most countries are, and they profit by exploiting your personal data. It's time to put a layer of protection between your online activity and these tech juggernauts. And that's why I use ExpressVPN. Think about how much of your life is on the internet. Sadly, every site you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets tracked and data mined. But when you run ExpressVPN on your device, the software hides your IP address, something big tech can use to personally identify you. So ExpressVPN makes your activity harder to trace and sell to advertisers. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your internet data to keep you safe from hackers and eavesdroppers on your network. What I like most about ExpressVPN is how easy it is to use. Download the app on your phone or computer, tap one button and you're protected. And ExpressVPN does all of this without slowing your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar, The Verge, and countless others. So stop handing over your personal data to the big tech monopoly who mines your activity and sells your information. Protect yourself with the VPN that I trust to keep me safe online. Visit expressvpn.com slash WalshYT to get three extra months free. Am I the a-hole for calling my brother a mama's boy and refusing to apologize for ruining his birthday? Okay, my brother and his wife live at my mom's house. Mom tends to get involved in their marriage constantly and my brother lets her. Uh, Sister-in-law always complains about mom steamrolling her and her decisions and violating her privacy. When sister-in-law got pregnant, mom got worse. She went out and bought a whole nursery and put it in her room, despite sister-in-law having one in her room. The most recent conflict is about mom pushing to be in the delivery room and sister-in-law saying no. My brother not only is siding with mom, but he's making promises to her to keep her happy. Uh, last week, we were gathered at mom's house for my brother's birthday. His friends came and asked why sister-in-law wasn't at dinner table. My brother nonchalantly said that she was just being a princess, acting spoiled and immature over everything. I was shocked and hurt on her behalf, so I responded, actually, she's probably just upset now that she realizes that you're a grade-A mama's boy, ready to do whatever mom says while ignoring your wife's wishes. Brief silence while his friend stared. He started arguing about how disrespectful I was. He told my husband uh, to say something, and my husband just said, don't mind me. I'm just a bystander. Well, your husband, real brave on your husband's part. What's, what's up with the men in these fa this, this family here? Dinner got awkward and my brother's friends left early. He went off on me saying I embarrassed him before his friends and ruined his birthday dinner. I decided to go home because he kept yelling. Mom then called demanding I apologize for the rude things I said at dinner table, but I refused. I think, first of all, you and your sister have similar problems. You, you, both, uh, you both chose some winners here. So you, you're getting screamed at and your husband just sitting there, don't mind me, I'm just a bystander. Coward. No, you're not the a-hole here. I mean, I, I think you, you did the right thing. The first problem here is that your your brother is a grown man throwing a birthday party for himself. And you know how I feel about that as a grown adult. And you're throwing a birthday party for yourself and then crying because someone ruined it. You ruined my birthday. <laughs> what are you, five years old? Apparently so, at least emotionally and mentally. To be expected from an adult man who still lives at home, demands his mommy take his side in arguments. And look, leaving all that aside, just a, a, a quick tip here. For It should be pretty obvious, but there are many married couples who don't seem to understand this. In a marriage, um, you never complain about or insult your spouse publicly in front of others. Now, you shouldn't insult your spouse at all. It's not a good thing to do. But if you're going to have a heated disagreement... And there's gonna be, and if, if there's gonna be rude things said back and forth, and it shouldn't happen, but it happens sometimes in a marriage, you, you never bring other people in on that. Okay, you you never do that. It's never the right thing, and it's so you 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 have to. I, it blows my mind when I encounter people, and this is so common, like married couples. But they don't understand. First of all, you, you, your loyalty should be to your spouse first and foremost. That's the relationship that should be the most meaningful to you in the entire world. That, that's the relationship that you that takes number one priority is your relationship to your spouse, even above your kids. Your relationship to your spouse is even more important than your relationship to your kids. That comes first. 
because that's what your kids need. Your kids need the, your, the mom and dad to have a good relationship. So it's for their sake also that you work on that relationship first and then everything flows down from there. All right, am I the, the a-hole for eating cake in my car so I didn't have to share with my wife and kids? I acknowledge as a father and husband that a lot of things that were singularly mine just before now aren't. Wife steals my clothes, wife and kids steal my food, kids steal my phone. The stealing the clothes thing is, is that's really a thing. I mean, all this is a thing. This is, the thing, this is stuff that wife and kids do. The stealing clothes thing, that's one I didn't quite expect ahead of time. Like, my wife and I are not the same size, thankfully. And But she, she'll, like, take my sweatpants. She'll take my, you know, my slippers. She's always stealing those. They don't fit her at all. They're also gross. Like, why would you want to wear my slippers? Have you seen my feet? Speaking of feet. Enough. Um, anyway, they, they uh, steal all these things, and usually I'm fine with it, but I just needed one thing to myself without hurting feelings and making someone cry because everybody is sensitive in this house, including me. I bought a single-serve piece of cake and ate it in my car without any wife sneaking bits or kids licking the chocolate from the top. Unfortunately, I got caught. My wife is upset with me for going so far as to eat cake while hiding in my car and called me dramatic when I told her my reasoning. Am I the a-hole? No. You're not remotely the a-hole. Not at all. F you, f you, f you, you're cool. You as the man of the house have a right to eat some damned cake every once in a while without a bunch of piranhas swarming you and, and nibbling at it. Your only mistake was eating the cake. I guess, did you eat it in the car in your own, at your own house, like in your driveway? You snuck out? That's a rookie move. You don't do that. Or, or did she discover the, the packaging or something like that? No, um, what you do is you, you go and you get the cake or whatever snack you want at the store or the restaurant. You eat it in the parking lot. And this is why in, in any restaurant, park, store, parking lot, you look around in pretty much any parking lot, any time, you're going to see men alone in cars eating. This is a thing that we do. It's the one place we get some peace and quiet. It's our sanctuary. And uh, so you eat it in the car and then you throw away the evidence and then you drive home. I've been through this many times. You know, I, I have snacks in my house that are supposed to be just for me, so I have to hide them. You can also do that, but that's a tough. That can be a tough move sometimes. But you hide your snacks like like sacred artifacts. You hide them away. For example, I really enjoy fruit snacks. Yes, I I like fruit snacks as a grown man. What of it? Got something to say about that? I do like fruit snacks. I like the uh, Mott's fruit snacks or Scooby Doo. Don't bring any of that Welsh's shit around me. I don't eat that. But. If I bring a box of fruit snacks home, my kids will consume the entire thing, including the box, within an hour. So I have to hide it. I have to like climb a mountain and bury it up there or, or descend into a cavern, into a cave, like Gollum. If anyone comes into the cave and wants a fruit snack, I have to ask them three riddles. You know, it's a whole thing. It's weird. Anyway, you're not the a-hole. Uh, not at all. You, you, you did the right thing. You just, you're incompetent in this case. You'll get better with time uh, for your own sake. You have to. And there we go. Look at that. Nobody was the a-hole today. There were no a-holes. I, I, am, I am merciful. Or maybe I just sympathize with jerks. I don't know. That's also possible. Am I not merciful? Well, there were no a-holes today, but uh, if you don't want to break that streak and become an a-hole yourself, then make sure that you hit like, you subscribe, and make sure to hit that notification bell.